Alright people, Mike Saladin here again. Welcome back to another video. Uh, today I'm just doing a, a quick run through of Sarah Morgan's quest uh, in memoriam. Uh, this is her personal companion quest, I guess you would call it. Uh, basically she comes up to you when you're out uh, just wandering around any random planet I think if you've spent enough time with her and got her approval up. Uh, I'm not sure how high it had to go but yeah just take Sarah around with you on all your missions and do things that she approves of and eventually she'll want to talk to you about her backstory. She explains how she was in the military, she was on this ship called the Dauntless. Uh, Eventually it was shot down during the uh, colony conflict war or whatever it was called. Um, some of her companions went down on this uh, escape pod crashing into this planet. Uh, she also escaped on a different escape pod and uh, also crashed onto the planet. Uh, but she wants to uh, return here to recover anything that's left of her uh, former crewmates because she's really riddled with guilt about what happened uh, and she's having a hard time dealing with it so yeah I thought I'd go along and do this quest it was a pretty interesting one it's, it's the first full companion beautiful. quest that I've actually done because I haven't really brought anybody else around with me on missions so far Sarah Morgan's probably like the first companion most people get, uh, aside from Vasco of course, the robot, but the first human companion, uh, most people it's going to be Sarah unless they maybe don't follow the main quest that much and they stop off in a random bar somewhere and they uh, get a companion in there because you can hire uh, a few NPCs to come join your crew who I think you can also request to just follow you around so uh, yeah if you do that maybe Sarah won't be your first companion but for me I've been just taking her everywhere I haven't really felt the need to swap to any other companions yet kind of wanted to get her approval up pretty high and uh, just see what her backstory is. Uh, probably going to romance her because uh, I've put a lot of time into the game now and I don't think I really would have time to really romance anyone else on this playthrough. Uh, like I'm not going to take out every companion and build up every companion's approval rating uh, in this one playthrough. I'll save that for like a new game plus thing. Romancing someone else or whatever. So basically we're back on the planet where she crash landed. Here's the remains of her shuttle. Uh, she crash landed it uh, and her companions, uh, they were on a different shuttle or escape pod or whatever. And the way she told the story it sounded like they were uh, like they were on a heavily damaged uh, shuttle. And it looked like it sort of blew up on impact when it hit the planet. So she's not really expecting anyone to have survived uh, this little uh, encounter on this planet. But uh, we're going to have to break into her old uh, computer to get some data on where the other uh, escape shuttle uh, or escape pod or whatever you want to call it. Uh, we're going to hack into her computer to see uh, where the details of that are. Uh, but in order to do that we have to get a power cell uh, I think I have a few power cells emergency power cells in my own ship but uh, don't worry if you don't have any with you because part of the quest uh, is that uh, Sarah tells you about the uh, distress beacon she set up on top of a nearby sort of mountain area and there's a power cell that she used uh, over there so you don't really have to bring your own but if you have one in your inventory you can skip that part of the quest at least I I would like I would imagine you would skip that part of the quest if you have a uh, if you have a power cell already on you but I decided I would just leave the ones I have on my ship 
uh, because why would I waste those when the this mission's already providing me one for free? I mean, I might need those power cells in a future mission. Uh, they seem like uh, they're going to be an item that gets used again and again in side quests and stuff. So maybe it'll be good to have a few on me. So anyway, this is Sarah's old uh, part of her old camp up on this mountain where she set up her distress beacon or whatever. So you just come up here, you grab the uh, beacon or the uh, power cell. I stole some credits that she had laying around. I don't know why she left those there. And then we got ambushed by these uh, creatures. Um, I didn't really have a really good weapon equipped. It's a sniper rifle. It's uh, not really that good against these guys. But I tried it out anyway. Spammed some shots onto that guy. Uh, swapped to this machine pistol. It really wasn't uh, much of an improvement, uh, but I did try to empty some bullets on them and then I realised uh, that I've got this really good shotgun on me. Um, it does a lot of damage and I've got like, uh, I've ranked up my shotgun uh, usage to like uh, the third rank or something. So I'm able to do quite a bit of damage with this weapon. It's got a really good fire rate as well, like you just unload 12 rounds in like 5 seconds if you're quick enough. Uh, obviously there's a lot of recoil so you have to control it and uh, try to get in close, make sure you're getting all your shots on target. Uh, but yeah, these things were pretty tough. Uh, I'm only level 19 or something and these creatures, uh, some of them are like level 25, level 32 one of them was. Uh, but they're not they're not extremely hard or anything, but they are gonna take uh, quite a few shots to put down So I might just take out like uh, three or four of these things on this mission uh, There was another one around here it ran off somewhere So while it was distracted I decided to just uh, rob anything else that was laying around here and then I went looking for this other one. It was hiding over here, I guess. I'd really badly injured it or something. But yeah, it went down with not too much trouble. So then it was time to head back to uh, Sarah's main base. And uh, yeah, I was just speaking to her to make sure she was okay. She was using her fists again to fight for some reason, even though I've equipped her with weapons. It's pretty strange. It's uh, something that keeps occurring with Sarah Morgan. Uh, she just unequips her weapons and starts using her fists or swaps to a melee weapon Even if she's got like loads of guns on her. It's really strange So yeah, I put in the uh, power cell and I made sure to rob all these books and this skill magazine or uh, whatever it was and I got into the computer and you look through some old uh, emails or whatever and old documents and uh, you, it reveals to you that the crew, uh, it uh, reveals that the crew, where their location of where they crashed, so we're gonna head off there next. You find out some uh, interesting details if you read the emails closely about uh, what Sarah was uh, doing, what she was feeling when she was trapped here and whatever. But we don't really have time to read that in this video so I'm just going to skip on through that. Uh, I don't know if um, people find uh, Sarah to be an interesting companion or not. Um, the game hasn't been out that long so I don't know what uh, people's feelings are on uh, who they think the best companion is or anything. But I thought she was pretty compelling and she got a lot more interesting once I learned of her like past military service. Uh, she didn't really come off as a military type when I first spoke to her. She seemed more like a like science-y type who was interested in like exploring uh, the galaxy or whatever. So yeah, I thought I think she's pretty interesting after that reveal and her background came out. So yeah, we got to the uh, other side of the planet where the other uh, the other uh, escape pod went down, and we found there's actually someone living here. 
and that it, it doesn't make much sense because Sarah thought everyone who'd uh, escaped in her escape pod had blown up on impact but it actually turned out there were two survivors uh, two of her crewmates did survive and they actually had a daughter here uh, on this planet and she sort of exactly. been living by herself out here which was an interesting twist I did kind of see it coming that not that there would be some sort of daughter or something, but uh, kind of that there would be at least one crew member who survived for years and maybe went a bit crazy or something. I was expecting that, um, but they did do their own little twist with it and instead the actual initial survivors have uh, died and instead their child is still living here by themselves. Uh, I think that was a pretty cool little twist. But yeah, I think most people will suspect that when you're going to look for this uh, remains of this crew that you're going to find someone who actually survived or something like that. But anyway, uh, we spoke to the surviving daughter and she told us that her parents were killed by these monsters at this graveyard. Uh, so we came out here to get the recover the dog tags of the other crew members in this graveyard and uh, take them back to Sarah because she wanted them uh, to make sure that uh, she recovered this from the crew and their memory was preserved uh, and whatever so yeah we just gathered up all these there's uh, ten of them to get and then I took this helmet with me as well just in case and then you do you've been hearing like these sounds in the background uh, the entire walk over here like all this stomping and sounds of bushes being uh, moved around and stuff like that. Uh, so you're aware something's kind of following you or something. Uh, but I was a bit distracted here trying to mine some copper. So I was like, I w I'm here, I might as well get it. And then this like, dinosaur looking thing is running. Uh, thankfully, I have my shotgun ready. So I would really like unload on him take down a lot of his health and he didn't get to do much damage to me and this uh, creature has the final dog tag so you just loot it off its body and uh, yeah I was trying to drag it around <laughs> for some reason and it's too heavy to do that and then it's like a partner or mate or whatever is over here it's a smaller version of it so maybe it's actually its child or something but yeah, no mercy. <laughs> We're taking it down as well. Uh, it doesn't really have any dog tags or anything, I don't think. But you can rob some other stuff of it. So yeah, I think that's the two monsters that the uh, child here was talking about. So we come back here, we uh, hand Sarah her dog tags. Uh, and we find that Sona uh, has the uh, little girl we found here that she's been arguing with Sarah. She doesn't want to leave this planet. Because her parents are buried here and she hasn't really ever been anywhere else and she doesn't trust people a whole lot because of the only previous people that visited her uh, turned out to be crimson fleet uh, pirates or whatever uh, they came in pretended they were gonna take her to a new planet but they just robbed her and took all her stuff and uh, left her there so we had we had to convince her to come back with us to uh, New Atlantis or whatever. Uh, so you, you just have a quick conversation with her, and then Sarah's pretty happy about that that we've uh, decided to take uh, Sona back to uh, Constellation and New Atlantis or whatever, and uh, it's going to preserve the memory of her family and it's uh, easing her guilty conscience over uh, how her crew got killed on Thank Dauntless because uh, she was kind of a stubborn captain or whatever and she didn't give the order to evacuate until very late in that battle that put the ship down so this was pretty funny when we went back to speak to this marine commander guy Sarah for some reason just got spawned in behind him so during this conversation she's just talking to the back of his head 
and uh, it's really just it was pretty funny uh, one of those typical Bethesda moments uh, that he starts to turn around to talk to her over his shoulder uh, it's just it's so stupid but yeah it made me laugh it's kind of bug where it isn't breaking the game completely uh, and then they're like completely face to face so you can you can kind of laugh at this kind of bug it doesn't make you that mad and then this guy's face just looks really strange now because I don't think he was coded to talk to you from this angle so his face kind of just looks strange when he's at this angle and then he's looking back over his shoulder yeah this was just pretty funny you're absolutely right, sir. Uh, but anyway, we're basically uh, telling him we find the, 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 the surviving child of two of Sarah's crew and that we brought her back. I'll see to it personally. And he's uh, pretty pleased that we uh, did something Good like that. Both of you. It's been an honor. Once we're done here, we should have a little talk with Sona. Poor thing's waiting for us at the launch. So yeah, Sarah says we've got to go back to see Sona. She's waiting at the constellation headquarters the lodge or whatever so we run back here make sure she's settling in okay it would be pretty funny if you could uh, put her as yeah. a crewmate Did you want to and then you just have something? this kid running around on your ship you give her a gun maybe she can get into bottles or something but uh, Bethesda they don't like to put like the children in their yeah. games near the combat uh, at least I don't think so. So it's unlikely we'll be able to do that. I think she's just gonna hang around the lodge from now on. She does seem interested in enjoying uh, Constellation or whatever, so that's uh, pretty good. And then I like this line coming up where we uh, tell her that Auntie Sarah's gonna buy her spaceship at some point. That was pretty funny. Do you like it here, Sona? At the lodge? Yeah, this place is huge. I mean, I've never seen. Yeah, Suna like seems pretty happy in this like place. Sarah. She enjoyed learning <laughs> about uh, her new environment. Wish. This place isn't mine alone. It belongs to everyone who's a part of Constellation, and I think it should belong to you too, Sona. I want you to stay here and make this your home. Oh, does that mean I get to go exploring with both of you? Or wait. Do I get yeah, so Sona's talking about when they own her own ship now, and this is where we get to do my favorite line, where we just go, uh, "Yeah, Auntie Sarah, I'll buy you one." <laughs> well, uh, Auntie Sarah can't exactly afford that right now, but she can provide you with the best exploration training in the galaxy. I thought the uh, Sarah's voice actress did a good uh, job delivering that line read. So it was pretty funny. Ready to have another member of Constellation signing on for missions. Oh, I can't wait. Well, anyway, thanks for letting me stay here. I promise I won't let either of you down. I'm sure that you won't. Well, I think we should let Sona get settled. If you wouldn't mind, I'd like to visit the colony war memorial now. So yeah, basically Sarah, uh, she wants to go back to, to the war respects. memorial now at the center of New Atlantis. And uh, just pay her respects over there. So we're just going to head out of the lodge and go do that now. And I think after we do that we can, uh, we can have some more dialogue with her and uh, keep moving this romance. Uh, all these people this uh, romance dialogue along lives distilled down to names on a memorial I wonder how close I came to being reduced to just a name I am proud I was simply too foolish to realize it until you changed my perspective. And I care about you too. There's obviously some kind of a connection between us that I think we need to discuss. Yeah, just I just keep choosing the sort of romancy uh, dialogue options just to move it along. 
so then she tells us she wants to meet us at this uh, fountain or waterfall or whatever it was. I hadn't actually been up here before, so this was a pretty uh, nice view and uh, cool place to see for the first time. I don't know why I hadn't uh, come up here before, just I don't think there was any quests that made me come here. So yeah, this was the first time I was seeing this area. It's pretty cool, pretty nice place to uh, have this dialogue. I've been from one end of the settled systems to the other, but this place, this exact spot, there's nowhere else like it in the galaxy. Uh, yeah, again, I just picking the sort of romantic but lines. You're absolutely right. I usually come up here to mull over some of the heated debates we have at Constellation. You'd be surprised how many decisions I've made on this very spot. That's actually why I asked you to meet me up here. <clears throat> I was hoping we could talk about something very important. I know you are. Just give me a moment. I have a lot I need to say. It's about my return to Cassiopeia. What we learned about Sona has been constantly replaying in my mind. Oh, maybe it sounds crazy, but that young girl's isolation feels like a reflection of my own life. For how long? I've spent my life surrounded by all sorts of people. Constellation, the Navigator Corps, <laughs> hell, even the UC military. Despite that, no matter how hard I've tried to make them a part of my life, they tend to drift away and disappear. Are you sure? For all we know, it's in my nature to keep people at arm's length. Or worse, push them away. Yeah, sure. And who wants to take on that responsibility? You? Wait a moment. That's exactly what you're saying, isn't it? Sorry, I, um, I just need a moment to gather my thoughts. I know you want to have a serious relationship. You want to become close. So, if you're willing to take that leap of faith with someone like me, then I'm ready to do the same. You're something truly special. You know that? You've helped me conquer my self-doubt, my confidence, hell, everything. For the first time in my life, I feel... complete. <laughs> and with you by my side, I'm convinced that feeling will last forever. You're the best thing that's happened to me in my life. I love you. Always. So yeah, just let the dialogue play out for that final scene there, basically. And then I leveled up after that. Uh, so that was a pretty cool mission. Enjoyed doing that. Interesting to see uh, where... I'm interested to see what all our companion quests are like. Um, I think I need to get some more like proper story mission companions. Uh, because so far I only really have like Sarah and Andresia, or whatever her name is. Uh, but yeah, we'll see how those go. So alright people, thanks for watching and I'll see you again next time with another Starfield video.